Guys, what's going on? Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this episode, we're talking about the latest arrivals from Imprint Films out of Australia. Uh, before we go any further, these are always region-free. Every Imprint title to date has been region-free. Uh, this wave hits hard. We're going to kick it off with The Warriors, the director's cut and the theatrical cut. We're going to talk about the After Dark Neo-Noir Cinema Collection one it's volume one we're going to talk about the contender and we're going to talk about bloody sunday so this is not a review video as you know reviews always show up at serial midnight.com actually as the as this video is going up the review for the warriors should be uh it should be live right now on serial at midnight.com so let's kick it off here this is actually this is the first uh chronologically in this stack as well so Obviously, a movie that so many of us love, but for a long time, The Warriors has only been available in a director's cut that inserts a new prologue that's very comic booky. It feels... I don't love the director's cut because of the changes that are made to it. I'm one of those, like, theatrical cut first, and then you can give me a director's cut. So this box set does give us both cuts and they're on two separate discs as imprint is often uh so great about doing let me show you the box this is a gorgeous box of course the box version of this is going to be limited uh but future you know as presumably once this box has sold out the individual titles themselves will be uh marketed you know in non-limited editions uh here i'll hold this up if you want to freeze frame that and let's see what's underneath this i have not even looked Oh, nice. The Baseball Furies. Um, this is an amazing movie. It's Walter Hill doing what he often does, which is blending genres. So much of his stuff is Western motivated. There's a lot of samurai themes here, too. Uh, disc one is our director's cut. Uh, it has... Here, I'll do this. I'll hold it up. I'll flip it around. Has uh, the director's cut, of course. It has an audio commentary, new audio commentary by Chris Pogiali and former editor of Fangoria, author slash author Michael Gingold. Uh, the Walter Hill introduction from I think it was the 2005 DVD. That's here as are the there was a four part making of documentary series that totals a little bit over an hour. That's here on this disc as well. So uh, director's cut. We're all thinking it, right? We're all thinking, clink, clink, warriors. I'm not going to do it. You can do it. Uh, the theatrical cut is my jam. I think this is the superior experience, but I'm just happy that it's here. It looks great. This this Blu-ray, It's I, it doesn't say anything about being a new 4K restoration or anything like that, but it looks great. It is a spectacular transfer. Uh, so we have here, I'll hold this art up and I will flip that around for you guys. Uh, audio commentary by Walter Chow. That's new. Uh, the warriors from the cutting room floor. That's deleted extended scenes from the, the TV cut. The TV cut had about 10 minutes of scenes that were put back into it to bring it up to the two hour running time that the TV slot needed. Uh, sound and fury scoring the warriors. Now, that's an interview with a composer, Barry Dvorson, from 2022. That's brand new. They have new interviews with uh, David Patrick Kelly. Clink, clink, clink. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you're like, why is he doing that with his fingers? Um, there's a scene in the movie where he's this guy's banging bottles together on his fingers and he sings Warriors Come Out and Play. Uh, come Out to Play. Uh, let's see. In a new interview with David Patrick Kelly. New interview with actor James Remar. New interview with Dorsey Wright. Uh, there's a featurette on the Greek roots. This is based on a Greek, it's not a myth. I think it actually happened, but uh, it's, it's, it's based on a Greek story from thousands of years ago. Uh, magic, whole lot of magic video essay by Chris O'Neill and a photo gallery and TV spots. Tons of stuff here. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on these two discs. So I like, see, here's like, you might be thinking, that, well, why couldn't they put the director's cut and the theatrical cut on one disc? Well, this, you have two different experiences, and each disc has its own unique features, its own unique commentary, so they really used the space on the disc. So you, you are getting two discs worth of content. Um, 
you know, I see what you guys say. I see all the stuff that gets said about these uh, releases. These are prestigious titles, prestigious releases, as you can see, and uh, they do really pack in the stuff, as we're going to talk about with this, which may be one of my new... There have been a lot of great imprint sets uh, in the two years that the company's been around. The Harry Brown box set, um, this stuff that the Space 1999, the Hammer set. This, hey, the Collaborations, the Collaborations box set. Uh, this is really speaking my language. This is 90s Neo Noir, and it's volume one, collection one which implies that there's going to be at least one more of these. And that's tremendously exciting for me because these movies, uh, this is the kind of stuff that I was, that I grew up with. And I mean, I wasn't watching them in the theater, you know, these hard R rated movies. Uh, but like when I was in the nineties, as I was becoming a film fan, taking it beyond, you know, I like back to the future and I like Jurassic park and then really becoming a movie fan that was following directors and actors. This is what was around. This is what was kind of, the scene. Uh, so we have six different neo-noir films that range, they, they span 1990 to 1998. And they come from all different studios, which is really important. Uh, this is an imprint release, Lionsgate, Columbia, uh, which is Sony, MGM, IRS, Paramount. Lot, so a box like this probably could not happen in America because of the different studios and the different... You know, in America... The, the studios don't play nice with each other and they can't, we don't, we got it with Halloween, right? We got the Halloween box set. We got the Friday the 13th box set, but it's so rare. So something like this, where you have multiple studios coming under one roof uh, for representation. That's pretty great. I mean, there's a piece of glue right in the middle of Demi Moore's forehead. Uh, let me get that off there. Uh, this is a spectacular, spectacular box set. So I'll show you what we got here. Again, remember, reviews show up at serialatmidnight.com. I'll be writing reviews for these as I, as I watch them. Some of these I've, I've seen before. Some of, there's a couple here that I've never seen, so they'll be discoveries for me. Uh, After Dark, My Sweet. This is a Jason Patrick and Rachel Ward movie with Bruce Dern. Uh, he's a boxer who, again, I'm not going to summarize the movie for you, but these are all very deeply rooted in the noir tradition. Down on their luck characters who are trying to make a new start, taking opportunities that, you know, hey, here's an opportunity to kidnap somebody and it's going to be fine. It's just, they're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. It's just for the money and it'll put us on our feet and we don't have to worry about anything after this. How could it go wrong? There's lots of ways it could go wrong and it always does, but that's noir. Uh, the darkness of the human heart, the, indom the, the, the spirit of never being able to, to get ahead. Um, Mortal Thoughts. Demi Moore, Bruce Willis is in this. Is this the movie where they met? I, I can't remember. Demi Moore, Glenn Headley, who is uh, uh, great, just great. John Pankow, Harvey Keitel is in this. Uh, basically a movie about a, a web of lies. Flip that around. These all have, uh, if, hopefully you're freezing on these uh, to see the special features and stuff. Great. Um... I, I'm trying to think of another word that's not important. Substantial. Substantial special features that really add to the conversation. We talk about this so many times, right? So many special features are just dandelions in the wind. You watch them. You've learned nothing. You There's nothing to talk about. They're gone. The minute It's cotton candy. It's gone the minute after you've consumed it. That's not what this is. These are really telling the story from the people who were there. Uh, Rush. Amazing haunting movie. I'm I haven't revisited. I'm like I'm not crazy about the idea of revisiting this movie because it is so sad, so intense, but it's great. Another Jason Patrick movie. This is the second Jason Patrick movie in this collection with Jennifer Jason Lee, where they are undercover narcotics officers who go too deep and they can't get back out again, and they're drug addicted and it's so sad. It's so bleak. And this is the song that the Eric Clapton song, uh, this is the movie that the Eric Clapton song, Tears in Heaven, sort of, uh, Eric Clapton wrote that song about his, his son that passed away, but it, it was in this movie and it had a music video and it was a huge deal. And that music video is included here on this set, which is amazing because I'm sure that took a lot of clearance, right? So I'll hold that up.
but the idea of getting a music video is uh, like that's that's pretty great. One false move. This is Billy Bob Thornton. Let me read the cast to you. Bill Paxton, Cinda Williams, Billy Bob Thornton, Michael Beach, Earl Billings, uh, Earl Billings, Jim Meltzler. <clears throat> this is small town crime. I mean, it's all so noir. Flesh and Bone. Dennis Quaid, Meg Ryan, uh, James Caan. Sort of a, a, a neo-noir western. Because the western does not have to take place in the 1800s. There's a, it's, a, it's a theme, it's a setting. It's a Twilight, Susan Sarandon. Uh, Paul Newman, Susan Sarandon, Gene Hackman, Reese Witherspoon is in this. Who else is here? Stalker Channing. Giancarlo Esposito is here. Music by Elmer Bernstein. This is the one I haven't seen this in ages. So I'm keen to revisit it. Uh, they, I don't want to be the guy who sounds super old, but like they don't make movies like this anymore. Now, they would take each one of these movies and they would expand them to eight episodes for Netflix. Uh, this is also amazing. This comes with a book and it's full of essays. Each movie gets its own essay. After Dark, My Sweet by Walter Chow. Um, some of these have spoilers in them. I just dense text. I love this. I love essays about movies. I hope to one day write essays about movies for box sets like this. Like this. this is what I'm doing on my site, right? This is what the reviews at Serial at Midnight are. Like, I love writing about movies and really digging into the themes, where they fit in context of their time, their, who, who made them. Now, on that note, let's talk about, is this the next one chronologically? No. The Contender. Uh, amazing movie from mm, 2000. I was thinking it was 99. Joan Allen, uh, l listen to the cast here. Gary Oldman, Joan Allen, Jeff Bridges, Christian Slater. Uh, <laughs> um, I lost my place. William Peterson, Philip Baker Hall, Saul Rubinek, and Sam Elliott. Uh, directed by Rod Lurie. Written and directed by Rod Lurie. Amazing, amazing stuff. Sort of political noir. It's not actually a noir. It's not in the noir set, but I've seen this movie before, and it does have that... Good, good double feature with Night Falls on Manhattan, which is another uh, imprint release. And last but not least, we're going to talk about Bloody Sunday, a movie about the famous Bloody Sunday event. That you two wrote the song about it. Uh, this is directed by Paul Greengrass, who... It's a 2002 movie, and immediately, like, his next directorial effort was a Bourne movie, like a Jason Bourne sequel, and then he spent several, I think he directed two, and he wrote one, he might have done three. He transitioned from here into Bourne movies, the Bourne Identity, the Bourne Supremacy, that's the word, he didn't, he didn't do Bourne Identity, but the, uh, some of the later entries in the franchise, and, um, uh, me, I'm trying to read the, the, this print is so small. James Nesbitt, who's a great actor. The Hobbit, he's in the Hobbit movies, but I would recommend if you want to go deeper on James Nesbitt, Jekyll. Seek out Jekyll. It's a BBC uh, very short series. Um, and here, I should show you. I'll give you the full spinning tour. Freeze frame that if you want to read those extras. Here's the case. So you see we're dealing in this wave, Warriors Aside, which is sort of a, a genreless, it, it defies genre. Warriors exists on its own. Warriors does its own thing. Everything else here is a solid adult drama. And I love that. 
we don't really get a lot of adult dramas anymore. I love the superhero movies. I love the sci-fi. I mean, I'm a big sci-fi space fan, fantasy fan. I love genre movies, but I don't want those to come at the expense of adult cinema. And and I don't mean that in the in, I don't mean like dirty movies. I mean mature themes. Uh, I I miss those movies. And we, again, now they mostly just get full series. They get turned into eight episode series or 10 episode series on streaming services. But there's something to be said for a one hour and 45 minutes adult drama. Uh, and I love this stuff. This is great. So uh, remember, reviews will show up at serial at midnight.com. They're already showing up there. And we'll continue to have deeper discussions about these movies. Uh, I'll put links to some of the places you can order these in the description of this video as well. Uh, but imprint continues to impress and they continue to be a real a real guiding light for high prestige cinema on a high prestige format with tons of substantial special features and i think very highly of the label and the people that work on them and the people that contribute to them so great stuff comes highly recommended guys thank you so much take care until next time i will catch you later